What up, everybody? And welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades. Today's featured blade, we're going to do another fixed blade. And what we've got is the K-Bar TDI. Now, this is the uh, large version of the TDI. Uh, there are multiple versions of this knife, but in this basic form factor, there's basically two different versions, a small uh, two and I think two and 2.4 or two and a half inch blade and then this larger version that they advertise at three and eleven sixteenths uh, inch blade uh, It's available in uh, tanto blade configuration this drop point with or without serrations uh, and then there are a couple of newer versions that I think that Rick Hinderer had a hand in designing, and they have a little bit more of a radical blade design. Uh, I believe they are like a recurved tanto, and then there's a slight difference in the handle design. Uh, but what we're going to talk about is the Model 1483 Large TDI in the drop point, partially serrated, and I believe this model has been discontinued. I think that the large uh, fine edge version, the 1482, is still available, but I'm not sure about this one. Uh, I did see that the large fine edge version in stock different places. I checked Blade HQ, a couple other places. You should be able to get this for slightly less than $50. Uh, now, TDI stands for Tactical Defense Institute. Uh, that is a law enforcement training institute. It is headed up by an uh, ex-law enforcement officer named John Benner. Uh, Mr. Benner is the one that designed this knife, and uh, I believe he is the president of TDI and one of the lead instructors. And he designed this knife as a last-ditch defensive tool for police officers. Uh, again, just like I've talked about in some of my videos, when you carry a firearm, if somebody goes for your firearm, you need to be able to retain it with one hand. You need a fixed blade knife you can pull with your offside hand and use to get this attacker off of you while you are defending your firearm. Police officers are under a great deal of uh, danger in the situations that they face. Uh, many, many, many hundreds of different examples of uh, perps going after a police officer's firearm and using it against them. Uh, that is something we do not want to see in a job where you get paid very little in order to put your life on the line defending others. So the design of this knife and the design ideal of it is very admirable in a last ditch defense weapon all right let's bring the sheath in here we're going to set this thing down as usual we're going to knock out the specs first thing uh like i say this is the large version uh, the advertised blade length on this is three and eleven sixteenths and i measured it three and five eighths inches or nine centimeters uh, blade stock thickness pretty thick 187 thousandths of an inch or 4.76 millimeters Blade width, 1.24 inches or 31.5 millimeters. The handle length, and that is just strictly the length of the handle itself, um, four and three quarters of an inch or 12 centimeters. The handle thickness, 672 thousandths of an inch or 17 millimeters. The handle width, 1.21 inches or 30.8 millimeters. The overall length is a little deceptive because this is an angular shape and I measured it from the point of the blade to the point of the handle, the butt end of the handle. That is seven and three quarters of an inch or 19.5 millimeters. Uh, the behind the edge thickness on this blade. Uh, it's a little thick, guys. This is not going to be a fine slicer. It is a last ditch defensive weapon. And we'll go over some of the uses later on in the video. Uh, behind the edge, you are right at 29 or 30 thousandths of an inch. And that is 0.73 millimeters. Um, you know, that's due to the 
thickness of the blade stock and that short grind that is on it. Uh, with the thickness of the blade stock and the size it is, you're looking at a substantial uh, weight 6.35 ounces for the knife alone, 9.03 ounces for the knife and sheath, and that is 180 and 256 grams respective. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and while we're fresh on it, let's go ahead and knock out that edge thickness. Um, like I say, this knife is not designed as a slicer. It's not really designed as a utility tool. It is purpose designed as a last ditch defensive weapon. And they did it in a thick blade stock with a reinforced tip on that blade profile on purpose. So you don't get a real thin behind the edge thickness. Uh, you do have a hollow grind here, but it is a short grind. You can see compared to the width of the blade profile, the grind height is actually less than half of that blade width. And that gives you a thick behind the edge uh, blade profile or edge profile, I'm sorry. Not a big deal. We just want to go ahead and, you know, say up front, that's what this knife is all about, and that's okay. That fits within its design parameter. Now, uh, we'll talk about the sheath next. Um, the sheath is an injection molded sheath. You can see here it is in the Tanto shape, so that tells you that it's a universal sheath for this model. Uh, depending on size only. So this will work on uh, all four versions of the large size, and that's uh, the partially serrated and fine edge of the Tanto and the repeat in the drop point as we have here. Uh, it is a, an injection molded sheath. It does have a metal spring clip, and you can see it is sprung on this one. This is a loaner knife from my buddy Dan, and he carries this knife in his car with the sheath clipped down to the inside of the uh, driver's side door panel for quick access with his left hand if needed. And that's why the clip is sprung. It is not sprung because it was used uh, under normal circumstances on a belt or on material on his clothing. Uh, and that's a replaceable part. It bolts on in four places and it's reversible side to side. Um, the sheath itself, the retention, the knife locks in pretty well on the sheath. You know, it's got an audible snap. There is a little bit of play, uh, you know, not a big issue. It's not crazy play, but I'm gonna say this. In researching this knife, I came across an issue, not with the knife itself, but with the sheath. And I came across this on different law enforcement forums online. Uh, now this knife was designed by uh, an ex-police officer, trainer. He specialized in training police officers, and it was designed for police officers, but there was a little bit of a problem. The knife design itself is great. The sheath design, the retention is a little weak, and what they were finding is that anybody could just walk up to the officer uh, in any type of altercation, hand-to-hand -hand altercation, and easily just pull the knife out of that sheath and use it against the officer. Uh, while in normal everyday use for civilians, the retention is fine. I don't wanna give the sheath uh, too, you know, down the road too much and say that it's super weak. It's not, it's not gonna fall out or anything like that, guys. Uh, but for a police officer, uh, you often see on a police officer's belt, take a look at their duty weapon holster. Uh, not only does it have one level of retention, two levels of retention, most departments require level three retention in a firearms holster. Now, the same thing really needs to apply into a knife sheath uh, when this knife is viewable on the officer's belt by anybody. So I did come across, there was a little bit of backlash on the sheath and it created sort of a secondary market for aftermarket sheaths. Um, so if you are a law enforcement officer, keep that in or take that into account. It's on your, uh, at your local PD, they may already have policy 
uh, in place that would prevent you from carrying this knife due to the holster design. So check that out. All right. Now we will go into the materials on this knife. Uh, it is a heavy bladed, thick blade stock in AUS 8A. Uh, AUS 8A, the A on the end of it doesn't mean anything except the it was the annealed or softened version of AUS 8 and that is normal AUS 8. It's just been softened so it's easy to machine uh, pre-heat treat and companies use it. It saves on tool and and abrasives because the steel is softer before it's heat treated. Other than that, normal AUS 8. We were, we we're talking about a Japanese steel by Aichi. It is a medium high carbon at 0 0.7 to 0 0.75 uh, chromium content is 13 to 14 and a half percent. And it is a vanadium alloy stainless steel at 0.1 to 0.26 percent vanadium. Basically, AUS 8 is a competitor to 440 series stainless steels. Uh, the carbon content is right about 440B-ish. Uh, chromium content is a little lower than 440, uh, but, but still far enough and away enough for uh, corrosion resistance. But then you add the vanadium. Vanadium is a carbide former, and vanadium alloyed steels tend to be toothy and aggressive cutters. What you get in uh, AUS 8 is decent edge retention. It's not going to hold an edge forever, but it'll be easier to resharpen. Uh, good toughness, and that's impact resistance, you know, for uh, cracking or chipping, and good corrosion resistance. Uh, it is considered a mid-range or budget range stainless steel, and it is a decent performer, especially in a knife like this that hopefully you never have to use. Uh, again, because of its intended purpose, you hope you're never in that situation where you have to use it for its intended purpose. Now, the handle on this is uh, Zytel, injection molded Zytel, slabs on either side, uh, fixed with uh, Torx head screws. They are very solid. The entire knife has got a solid feel. They're well fit. Um, you know, everything about the the quality, the fit and finish of the knife itself is in line with what you would want to see. Material-wise, it's pretty much in line. The only downside I will say on materials, uh, I'm not even going to say anything about the blade steel, but I'm not a big fan of Zytel handle scales. Zytel tends to be very hard surfaced and slick. Um, not a huge issue in this knife because of the actual design of the handle, but something to keep in mind if you're going to be in wet environments. Like I say, the fit and finish is pretty decent on this. The grinds are even on it. Uh, this is a partially serrated version. The serrations are nice and aggressive. Uh, it came with a pretty decent sharp edge, although it is a thick edge, so it's not going to be slicey. Uh, it does have an aggressive and useful tip to the blade. No issues with piercing at all, and that is part of the design parameter. Um, you know, like I say, the grinds are even on it. Uh, no issues there. You do have a run of jimping that starts within the handle and is matched by the handle scales. It extends up onto the blade. The only thing I'll say about the jimping, it's moderately effective jimping. For my hands, it's not placed in the right place or it could use... Uh, it could use some extension along the blade spine. In my natural grip, my thumb goes forward of where it is. Um, if I bring back my thumb, it, that's to me, it feels like a weaker grip. I want to bring my thumb up a little bit. Um, and that's just my natural grip, and it's just a personal thing. It's neither here nor there. You get the jimping, and it's good jimping. You've got jimping along the top of the handle back towards the butt. Another run of jimping at the butt end on the inside of the handle, and then your choil area is smooth. All right. Uh, like I say, fit and finish on the handle scales, no issue there. Uh, the quality of the handle scales is, is good, you know, other than my issue with just Zytel in general. Um, now, in hand, what is this knife like in hand? And 
does it fit its intended purpose? And the answer is, the fill is very good and it does very much fit its intended purpose. And this knife is a last ditch defensive weapon uh, it is not a utility knife. It is not a craft knife. It is not a whittling knife. It's not a food prep knife. This knife was designed with this sort of pistol grip type of design to be a punching implement, uh, almost like a push dagger. Uh, to me, with a much more secure grip than a push dagger, I've never been a push dagger fan, but this has a very secure grip and a forward punching movement. Uh, so piercing, a stabbing, punching movement, very strong movement for this knife. Now the next thing would be in a slashing movement. Uh, while it does not have the curved blade style of a karambit, you still have the overall curved profile and the mechanical efficiency of that blade dropping down. If you want to slash with it in a forward grip, or you want to slash with it in a reverse grip and sort of a sickle type of cut, it would be very efficient. Um, I find that the handle design, it transitions well from forward to reverse grips. It's very intuitive. It feels secure in the hand. Uh, again, keep into account Zytel can be a little slick if your offensive or defensive blade work, you do a lot of transitions from forward to reverse grip. Just take that into account. A little extra training time, should you should be able to handle that. Um, but it is very secure in the hand, and I got to tell you, for that punching movement, uh, probably about the best design that I've ever come across. Um, I very much like that movement. Um, I very much like a slashing movement with the forward grip and the slashing movement with the reverse grip with the blade uh, edge in. Uh, it's very, very um, confidence building in the hand. I think that with even a minimal of training uh, that anybody with any physical uh, capability uh, should be able to use this knife in a defensive scenario. And law enforcement officers who may choose to uh, receive extended training with edged weapons would find this to be a very effective tool in its intended purpose. All right. Uh, you know what? It's such a simple design, guys. There's not a lot to say about it. I, it really it speaks for itself as soon as you grab a hold of it. Um, when you grab a hold of it, I, you know what? The first time I grabbed a hold of one of these, I just automatically started looking around to see if there was something I could stab it into just to test how secure it felt in my hand. It feels that secure in your hand. Um, I think that as a package with the sheath for the civilian market, uh, maybe for the military market, it's very good. Um, I do agree with what I found in my research as far as law enforcement goes. Um, I would not want to carry this knife exposed on my duty belt where somebody could grab it. it. There just is not enough retention. Now, if I could carry it on my inside belt, covered up where nobody could see it, I could consider it. Uh, on a secondary market, an uh, improved sheath system, with uh, maybe um, level two type of retention. So you got a friction fit and a snap closure, uh, like a thumb break, that would be good also. Uh, but as, as far as the overall design, the overall quality, the fit and finish, I think it is a very good design. It was a, um, not a radical design, it was a new line of thought uh, in defensive knives when it first hit the market and this knife has been out for years and there's multiple iterations of it on the market. Um, like I say, the smaller version, the Tanto version, then you've got the newer uh, Hinderer versions and uh, they're all just really good looking knives and for their intended purpose, I would say equally as impressive as this one. So I can recommend it as far as that goes. Um, with the qualifier of the sheath, depending on your intended purpose. All right, guys, 
Uh, thanks to my buddy Dan for loaning this to me. And uh, thanks to all of you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. As always, God bless you, and we will talk to you again.